Hi everybody, my name's Jane Dodd and I work for Nature Scott in Oban on the west coast of Scotland. Um, I've been asked today to speak to you about flapper skate. So what are flapper skate? Flapper skate are large flat fish uh, of the shark family. So they have a cartilaginous skeleton. They don't have bones, they only have cartilage uh, and they're related to sharks. Uh, they can grow very large, uh, three meters long and 1.57 meters across for the females and weighing over 100 kilos. Uh, the males are slightly smaller, uh, but can still uh, weigh over 150 pounds if you're an angler, uh, not quite 100 kilos. But uh, females get to 200 at 215 pounds, which is over 100 kilos and, and males about 150 pounds. So uh, flapper skate are categorised as um, critically endangered by the IUCN, so they are more um, threatened than uh, giant pandas at the moment. Um, their range and numbers have decreased in Scotland, um, but there are pockets where there are high numbers of skates still remaining, but still lots of work to do for their protection. And that's what I'm going to speak to you about today. Um, Anglers come from all over the world to uh, fish for skate off of Oban and have done for, for decades. And they've helped us a huge amount by collecting tag recapture data on flapper skate. So they have um, uh, reported that information to us and it was actually used to designate a marine protected area for flapper skate uh, off of Oban uh, around um, 2016. So, um, the, the site, as you can see, stretches all the way from Loch Sunart in the north, down the Sound of Mull, through the Firth of Lorne and into the Sound of Jura. It's quite a large site, uh, which makes sense for a large mobile species like Flapperskate. But the data, the tag recapture data, did show us that they are resident or at least loyal to the area. So if they leave, then they come back. So um, from the point of, of designation of the site, we started monitoring. Um, and rather than use external tags, which is what the anglers had used before, we started using an internal uh, passive in integrated transponder or PIT tag, uh, like vets use on dogs and cats to identify the animal. So we trained the skippers to, to put the tag just under the skin of the skate, and we used uh, a scanner to scan for that uh, tag inside the animal and record its recapture. The skippers also take photographs for us because we've learned that uh, the spot pattern on the backs of the skate is individual, like a, like a fingerprint, so we can identify them from that too. If uh, a, an angler, for example, doesn't have the pit tagging kit or the scanner, he can send us a photograph and that helps us to identify the animal. So the data is stored in a site called uh, SkateSpotter, which is an online database. So you can search, you can upload photographs to SkateSpotter and you can search on pit tag number or the date that you captured a skate to have a look at its capture history. So this is available to, to everybody. Um, and we um, encourage the anglers to go and have a look at the capture history of the animals, of, of the photographs of the animals that they submit. As you can see, we've got some animals that are on uh, very high numbers of recaptures in just a small space of, of a few years. So we started doing the pit tagging in 2016, and we've got animals on well over 20 or 30 recaptures at, at this point. So you can see this is a, a male, the capital M after the number uh, tells you whether it's a male or female, and it gives you the pit tag number and some information on the size of the animal and where, where it was captured. We do a bit more detailed science on the skate as well. So this is our um, network of acoustic receivers, our array of acoustic receivers, and we've got 10 in the site at the moment. So we have tagged around 50 skate with internal uh, acoustic tags. So these go into the body cavity of the animal. And when they come close to the acoustic receivers, they ping the receiver and we get a lot more detail on what the animal is doing and where it is spending its time. This gives us a lot more information because if we catch a fish, if we caught a fish three months ago and we catch it again today, we don't really know what it was doing in the meantime. But if it has an acoustic tag on it, we get a lot more detail of what it's been up to. We've had help for, with this project with the, the, from the vets at Edinburgh Zoo and scientists at St Andrews University as well, who've helped us with the internal tagging. They also ultrasound the animals 
and uh, took blood from the animal so we could look at stress hormones and reproductive state. So we were learning an awful lot about the animals as well because we don't know very much about skate. So that brings me on to the, the next part of our project, which is looking at uh, skate eggs. Uh, we, we know very little about the reproduction of skate, when they reproduce, how many eggs they produce, how long the eggs take to hatch, all these kind of things. So we asked our skippers uh, to look out for skate eggs for us. Um, sometimes a female who comes onto the deck of the vessel will release an egg onto the deck of the vessel. Uh, and one of our skippers did keep an egg for us, which was brilliant. Um, and uh, we, we took it to... Um, the aquarium facility at the Scottish Association of Marine Science just outside Oban to monitor its development. So this egg we received in April uh, 2019. As you can see, the eggs are quite large. When they're first laid, they're quite leathery and kind of green or gold in appearance. So about the size of, of an A5 sheet of paper, half an A4 is what they look like when they're fully, fully hydrated like this. We put the egg in an aquarium at SAMS and we monitored it uh, by taking a photograph every week. Uh, we put the egg onto a light box so that we could um, see what or try to see what was happening inside. Uh, initially, all we saw was the yolk of the skate of the egg and we couldn't see the embryo at all. And we were a bit worried that the embryo wasn't developing. So we decided to try uh, with the help of the vets at uh, Edinburgh Zoo an ultrasound technique to see if we could um, see uh, anything happening inside the egg case. And this was what we saw um, in August of 2019. So the egg was three or four months old at this point, but the embryo was so small and the, the yolk was still so big that we couldn't see the embryo with the naked eye, but we could see it on the ultrasound. In June 2020, I received this image from Stephen Benjamin, who was looking after the egg at Sands. And it looked to me, because you can see the, the point of the nose of the skate, hopefully, towards the bottom of the space that is called the capsule. Um, and I thought, oh, you know, that's getting a bit big. It looks like it might be ready to hatch. So um, we need to keep a closer eye on it. So we asked them at Sands to put a 24 hour camera on the egg in the hope that we would capture the moment of, of hatching. Um, on the 20th of September, I had a live feed to this 24 hour camera on my mobile phone. So I was checking it virtually every hour, wondering when the thing was going to hatch. And on the morning of the 20th of September, which was a Sunday, um, I saw this on my phone screen and I thought, oh, has the egg fallen over or have we missed the moment of hatching? We had the egg uh, propped against the rock at the back of the aquarium and, and the camera focused on the anterior end because that is always the end that the embryo comes out of. So um, we were a bit worried that we'd missed the moment of hatching um, and it was all a little bit tense. But the next morning when somebody went into the aquarium facility at Sands, they found a baby skate in the tank and it, we, we hadn't seen it on the video because the video was so focused in on the egg that we couldn't see the, the, the baby skates swimming about. So um, we were delighted that the egg had hatched, but we were quite worried that we'd missed the moment of hatching. However, the IT folks at SAMS went through the, the video that they had stored on the server and uh, they sent us this little clip um, of the embryo pushing through that membrane at the anterior end of the egg with the, with the tip of the nose. And you'll see in a moment that the wings are uh, folded over the back of the skate as it squeezes out through the little gap that it makes. So that had taken 18 months from when we had uh, collected the egg in the spring um, through to autumn time, so um, August, uh, September, when it, when it hatched 18 months later. So that gave us a little bit of information about skate that we didn't know before, that the eggs spend 18 months on the seabed. We released the baby skate back into um, the sound of Jura where the, where the female had been uh, captured. Um, and we, there's some video of it swimming away, which is quite nice, which hopefully you'll get to see later on. So the next uh, phase of our project, we started looking into where egg nurseries might be. We'd received a report um, in October 2009 Team from some scallop divers and recreational divers uh, diving near Sky, 
of high numbers of skate eggs on the seabed in a, in a particular area called Red Rocks. So in March 2020, I took a dive team to the area. Uh, the island in the north uh, of this image is, is Red Rocks and Longay in the south. And the boundary you can see is uh, where an urgent MPA was designated for the protection of the skate eggs that we found on the seabed in the autumn of 2020. So that gave us a year to look in a bit more detail of what was happening on the seabed at Red Rocks. So Nature Scott did a lot more survey work in the area. So this is by drop camera, where we drop a camera over the side of a vessel with a, a live feed to the surface and we let the camera drift over the seabed and see what the habitat like is like and how many eggs we can see. And we also use some remote operated vehicle, which you fly like a mini submarine with a, with a video camera on board. So that gives you a bit more, um, you, it's more directional. So you can actually search in a more active way uh, for what you're looking for. So this is what we found. The green blobs on the map uh, are where um, skate eggs were found on the seabed. And the bigger the blob, the more eggs we found. So we did find uh, over a thousand egg cases on the seabed there. The habitat is um, very particular as well. Um, the, there's large boulders on the seabed and the eggs are in the crevices between the boulders. And there's no, it's not very silty at all. It, it is very sort of clean environment. So that suggests there's quite a lot of water movement as well. Um, as you can see in this image, the, the density of the eggs was really, really very high. This is one of our ROV uh, images or a still from one of the images. So we also looked into where um, we had reports of eggs on the seabed from other places to put red rocks into a bit of context. Um, so you can see red rocks is on this map uh, near Skye. We've got some reports of egg cases in Loch Melfort in Argyll, which is inside uh, the Loch Sunart to the Sound of Jura MPA. There's a lot of reports from egg cases at Orkney, but a lot of those are um, egg cases that have washed ashore. So a lot of this data comes from the Shark Trust Great Egg Case Hunt, where people uh, re report egg cases that empty egg cases that they found on the beach and ones that they found on the seabed as well. Um, so um, we're working with Orkney Skate Trust in Orkney to have a look at what they can find on the seabed. Uh, and we commissioned uh, UHI Shetland to go and look for egg cases too. To, um, we, we had a, a report of 40 egg cases on the seabed and we, we asked them to go and do a drop camera survey and have a look in that area. Those eggs were still there but there was only about 40. So we're not seeing the same kind of numbers anywhere else in Scotland than, than, than we are in, in Red Rocks and Longay. So the site at Red Rocks and Longay was um, um, expanded. I'll show you that map a little bit again. So the, the urgent MPA is at the bottom uh, of this site. And, and then after doing some more survey work, the site that's gone to consultation is larger with this extra bit uh, sort of bolted onto the north where you can you can see there's lots of green blobs and we, we'd found lots of lots of egg cases so that site is out to consultation now uh, Scottish government are taking views on that and we'll make a decision on on the protection of the site in the long term so if you want to know any more about our uh, MPAs for um, adult skate or skate eggs you can go to site link which is on the Nature Scots website so all documents um, Rele relevant to the site, that its protection, uh, the fishing management measures, all kinds of things are available in, in SiteLink if you want to know more about that. If you want to help us with um, uh, skate uh, and ray conservation in Scotland, then a great way to do that is whenever you're on the beach, look for egg cases and report those to, to the Shark Trust. So they have a, a key where you can key out from the size and the description of the egg uh, which species it is, and then you can report it to the Shark Trust. Um, also, if you want to help with Skate Spotter, we're looking for volunteers to uh, match Skate for us. So if you sign up to Skate Spotter and then go to data and matching, you can help with those matching photographs. Unfortunately, we don't have a software that does that for us yet. We have to do it by eye. So we re rely very much on our volunteers for matching photographs for us. That's everything from me. Thanks very much. Um, I'll turn off the recording now and I hope you enjoy your day. Thanks very much. Bye.